Hey everyone, welcome back. Today in this episode of Ying's Squawk Box, we're going to be talking about how the U.S. market is just about chasing highs. So without further ado, let's turn our attention to the chart. Here's an S&P 500 index chart. We talk about this a whole lot, especially this dip, especially when this bounced back up from the March dip that we talked about. But today we're not going to talk about this smart time frame. We, we've been covering that for a long time. We're going to be talking about a rather big time frame. Let's turn our attention to the monthly chart. This is the monthly chart of the same index. And we're starting this data all the way from essentially March and February of 1993, if not earlier. That's the chart. That's the data. That's the U.S. equity market. We've come a long way, right? Here, the S&P 500 in the 90s, it's about 51. And then immediately in about six years, we go all the way to 115. Now, let's put a horizontal line. That's going to be the resistance. This resistance is tested here before financial crisis in 2008. And here we have a dot-com bubble. Here we have the subprime mortgage crisis. So those are two major crashes. If you live through the time frame, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you trade through that time frame, you're probably going to be a very good trader if you survive all of that. So with that being said, that's going to be how the entire situation look like. Let's put across here. Let's put across here. Boom. That's going to be how the market looks like. Once we break this support at 150, let's put across. There's just no stop at this thing, right? The U.S. equity market is the most powerful market in the entire planet, and it's not going down. It's going nowhere but up. And a lot of these momentum really come down to how people engineer the financial system in the United States. And that's not something that a lot of people pay attention to, all right? And we're going to get into the details. Once we break this 150 back in 2013, we're going to have a hiccups here and there. We're going to have some sort of volatility coming here and there, but there's just really no stop. Here, we have this hiccup here. And then we had another little hiccup in the early 2019. We had another little hiccup during the pandemic. And boom, immediately we bounce back up. So something like that, it's interesting. It's worth our attention. Now, let's take a look at the power shares. The power shares, which name QQQ, is a combination of the stock with the largest market capitalization. For example, Apple, for example, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, that sort of thing, right? right? So let's take a look at the daily chart. This is a daily chart of the QQQs. We have this bottom from uh, the dip in the March, we have this top before the pandemic started, and boom, we bounce all the way back up. We hit all time high here, and now it's gonna be 269. Let's put a horizontal line, and here we have a small volatility coming in here and there. The moving average catch up here on this day, stop bounce back up. Let's put across, and then now this is a chasing market, it's just gonna be people chasing highs. If not, some people are trying to short here and there, and that looks like a short, that looks like a short. People are trying to take some quick profit onto the downside right? But eventually they got squeezed out. They left. The buyer comes in, chase the stock price back up high. So essentially that's how things work. Earlier in this episode, I mentioned something about financial engineer, this system in the U.S. equity market. What the heck do I mean by that? Let's take a look at the biggest name, Apple. This is a stock chart of Apple, right? It looks pretty much like the QQs. Well, that's not surprising because Apple is the leading name of QQs. QQs hold a lot of shares of Apple. So that being said, we have all this uptrend. So we have this resistance here. Let's put a horizontal line and we have this dip. Let's put across and we came a long way, right? Let's put a trend line from there to there. Let's put another trend line from there to there. Boom. Now on this day, uh, let's put across, right? Uh, we poke into the moving average. It looks scary. I believe that was the news a week ago. An Apple CEO is going to have a testimony in front of Congress. So that information is reflected in the market. Now it seems like it's being solely digested. And once the information is absorbed, the price is going to bounce back up. Me personally, I don't really trade this setup. I know this is a setup from experience back in the days as a trader. But what's the interesting thing is none of these meetings, testimonies, these hiccups, it's going to hurt Apple. And here is why. Let's take a look at the fundamentals. Let's zoom back out. This is the fundamentals. Couple of things I look at when I look at fundamentals. First thing I look at is equity, $78 billion equity. And then the second thing I look at is liability, $242 billion liability. Together, that's about $310 billion on their book. A number like that is not just immediately start disappearing because 
somebody had a meeting or somebody gets sued, right? The company is too big for that. The next thing I look at is the cash to debt. Now they did something slightly more interesting here. The cash to debt, if you could pay attention to this trend, it's actually a little bit more steadier than you'd imagine. Most of the tech stock, the cash to debt ratio is going all over the places, but not for Apple. Apple at his size, the cash to debt over the past two to three years, it's been around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So that's relatively steady. So what that means is the $242 billion, 80% of that is cash. So that's why they have the balls to finance with debt, right? They don't have a lot of equities. So that being said, um, another thing that's related to this cash to debt is how they're maintaining their cost, right? Their cost is going nowhere but down. Uh, back in the days, we have 0 0.62, 0 0.63. Now we're back down to 0 0.62. And here, it looks like it's having a rounding issue. But if you're looking at more fractions, the number is actually dropping. So with that kind of scale, uh, it's able to mass produce all those products, MacBook, iPhone, iPad, without increasing cost. That's significant. That's not something that anybody can just do. The last thing on the balance sheet that I look at is called retained earnings. Retained earnings is the amount of capital that after all your business activities are done or recorded, the amount of money that you have left. So with 33 billion return earnings, they're gonna do one of two things. They're either gonna write a huge amount of check to their investors, which is called dividends, or they're gonna do something with the company, right? They're gonna spend the money to somewhere, right? Either R&D or buy some shares back. In this case, based on this, uh, based on this data, it looks like what they're doing is they're paying a huge dividend and they're also buying a lot of shares back. Here we have the buyback yield, uh, that's about 6.78%. So in other words, every year, we're looking at the shares outstanding in the market of Apple and 6% of the stock and over 6% of the stock is bought by themselves, right? They are reducing the supply of shares floating out there in the market. Hence the price go up. That's the mechanic there. That's the engineering there. So something like that, it's interesting. And Apple is not the only company that's doing this. Let's also look at the dividend. Apple investors are happy, right? Look at the amount of dividend that they're paying. Here, we have a dividend yield of 1.24. What that means is the stock price here, 380 something dollars, 381 dollars, 1.24% is dividend. Like if you just hold this thing for a million shares or something, then end of the year, you're gonna get a check of over a million dollars. So something like that, it's crucial, right? That makes investors not want to leave this company. And if they have more money, they're gonna to wanna to come back to chase the stock price up. Uh, so that's essentially what I mean by the financial engineering in the system of the US equity market. So there you go. I hope you liked today's episode. If you want to support the channel, give it a like and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next episode.